Hello and welcome back to Dr. Logic Awkwardly Does Logic in Her Office. Now that we have a concept of a logic as a formal system that allows us to identify the particular features of arguments that we want to call good, we're now going to marry this up with a particular notion of goodness of argument that will occupy us for oh, a good number of months to come as we will look at a number of different ways that this particular definition of good argument can be expressed. Now, we said in one of the very first videos that logicians are interested in truth. But more importantly, we are interested in relationships between the truth values of certain sentences. So whether or not a particular sentence is true is not a question that logic is going to answer. Logic is interested in answering the question, given that these things are true, what other things have to be true? At least in the context of the types of logics that we're going to be looking at, now for the next couple of months, as I said. The strongest definition of goodness of argument, kind of the sine qua non, the best type of argument that you could possibly have, is one that is necessarily truth preserving in the sense that if your premises are all true, there is absolutely 100% no way that your conclusion could also not be true. So here we're going to give you another definition, and this is the definition of a deductively valid argument. A deductively valid argument is an argument that is necessarily truth preserving. That is, there is no way in which the premises can be true without the conclusion being true. So you can see why this is such a strong property and why not many arguments are going to be able to reach this property. This is why we will later on in these uh, videos talk about definitions of goodness of argument that don't require this extremely high standard. Now, as with any good definition, there are bits of the definition that themselves need to be defined. So what do we mean by necessarily truth preserving? Now, you might also remember from the previous video, we made this distinction between the semantics, which is the way that we give meaning to strings of symbols in a formal language, and the proof theory, or the way in which you can take a string of symbols and convert it into other types of, uh, into other strings of symbols. Corresponding to this, we will have at least two different ways of cashing out the notion of truth preserving. So on the one hand, we can have this semantic concept. So on this notion, the semantic idea of truth, preser truth preservation is that every model that makes all of the premises of an argument true will also make the conclusion true. So another way that we can say this is that every structure, which is a model of the premises, is a model of the conclusion. So there is a semantic definition of, of uh, deductive consequence or deductive validity. That definition itself needs to have bits of it defined. I haven't said what a model is or what a structure is, but this is something that's going to differ from logic to logic. So we'll just kind of shelve that for the moment. I will give you those definitions later. On the proof theoretic side, we can talk about derivation. So if we take our premises and then we apply these rules of proof, these rules of transformation that allow us to change from this string of symbols to this string of symbols, if we have a derivation that gets us from the premises to the conclusion using kind of agreed upon rules, then if we have defined our rules properly, and this will be something else that we'll talk about in future videos, then we have a deductively valid argument so that if we define our rules properly, then every single step will itself be necessarily truth preserving. If we have a system like that, where we've got kind of good rules that allow us to never go from a true premise to a false step in our proof, then we can say that our system of proof is sound. So at every single step, our rules will preserve the truth. So if we started off with something true, every time that we apply one of the rules, we'll still end up with something true. There's also a relationship that goes the other way. Suppose that you have a valid argument in the semantic sense, so that if the premises are true, then the conclusion will also be true. One of the questions that we will ask of our systems is whether or not it will be possible to then use our proof theory to derive those conclusions from those premises. So 
If our proof theoretic derivations kind of match up with the semantics in the sense of preserving truth, then we have a sound system of logic going the other way. If we can always use our proof theory in order to derive the semantically valid arguments, then we have a complete logic. Soundness and completeness are going to be topics that come up again and again. Each time I introduce a new logic, one of the questions that you should immediately ask is, is the proof theory sound with respect to the semantics? Are the semantics complete with respect to the proof theory? This now gets us to the point where we have an idea of what goes into a particular logic, what we are looking for in a definition of goodness of argument, and in our next video we will actually start defining a language, a semantics, and a proof theory that will allow us to derive deductively valid arguments. See you then. Cheers.